their voices sing of love and joy. I love services when the music could just stand in for everything else. Uh, so if anyone needs to leave early, um, we're all set. We've, we've, had, we've had church. Thank you so much. And uh, thank you to our guest accompanist, Leigh Pettit, who's here this morning filling in for Tomas so he can be with his beloved's family for Easter. It is good to be together. I welcome you to the First Unitarian Universalist Church of San Diego, where we worship every Sunday in the South Bay, in Hillcrest, and online. Buenos dias, y bienvenidos a la primera iglesia, la primera iglesia unitaria universalista de San Diego, donde adoramos cada domingo en South Bay, en Hillcrest, y en línea. I am the Reverend Justine Sullivan, and I use the pronouns she and her. A special welcome to those of you who are here for the first time or the first time in a while. Please fill out the welcome card in your order of service. Me llamo Andrea y uso el pronombre ella. Una bienvenida muy especial a todos que están con nosotros por primera vez. Les extendemos la invitación de rellenar el formulario en el orden de servicio. Our community is a vital, diverse, multi-generational congregation without borders, with a mission to create community, nurture spiritual growth, and act on our values to help heal our world. Somos una congregación compuesta de personas de distintas culturas e identidades racializadas, personas de diversas orientaciones sexuales e identidades de género, Personas de varias habilidades mentales y físicas. We are creators of community and compassion. And though we can fall short, we are committed to practicing an affirming welcome to all. And before I light our chalice, um, just a technical thing. If you have a cell phone, would you just check and make sure that it's on silent? And if you wear hearing aids, would you make sure that they're in your ears? Um, if your hearing aids are on and they fall out of your ears, they can cause feedback, um, which we'd like to avoid. So everybody check your phone and go like this, and we'll be all set. Only if you have hearing aids. You know? <laughs> go like that. Um, we light our chalice this morning with these words by the Reverend Gretchen Haley. Roll away the stone of your hesitant heart. Let the light shine on all the sleeping shadows. Awaken to this day that offers itself to you and to all as a gift. Awaken to this beauty that persists, this chance that we might begin again, that even here we are finding our way to healing and hope that even now we are changed by the in and out of breath, the rhythm we forge across screens and comment sections, the recreation of community, that remembering of how to grieve together, woven through loving, that we might still surprise the earth with a new song sung together calling us all in and before long, sending us back out to life. Come, let us worship together. And now I invite you to rise in body or in spirit and join us in singing our opening hymn. Number 269, Lo, the day of days is here.
con espíritu de reverencia reconocemos que nos juntamos esta mañana en la tierra de los Kumiai, quienes continúan viviendo en todo su territorio. Al emprender este viaje juntos, mantengamos en nuestros corazones y mentes el pueblo Kumiai. In a spirit of reverence, we acknowledge that we gather this morning on the land of the Kumeyaay, who continue to live throughout their territories. May the light of this candle shine for our commitment to do the Kumeyaay people and to justice and equity for Indigenous people everywhere. Good morning, friends. Good morning. I'd like to invite any of the children or youth who would like to come up and join me up here for our time for all ages. Good morning. Oh, good morning. You got some new Easter eggs? Whoa, me too. See all my Easter eggs? Oh, nice. Come on up and sit down. I saw, but you're okay, right? Okay, you lost your money. <laughs> yeah. Good morning, good morning, good morning. We got airplanes. Airplanes? Whoa. <laughs> wow, cool. You can tell Miss Kate all about it over in Bard Hall door in RE. I'm sure there'll be some time to share. So today, friends, we're celebrating Easter, and it's also Trans Day of Visibility. So I, me too. So I would like to tell you the traditional story of Easter about the resurrection of Jesus and what happens after. But first, a few things. First, it's not really one story. It's a whole bunch of stories that were written down and told over a long period of time by different people. Second, the stories in the Bible have sometimes been used by people as reasons to do some pretty bad things. But I also think... They can be beautiful and meaningful, and I hope to share the story in that way today. So I invite you to let go of whatever might be attached to these stories, if that's true for somebody, and try to hear it as if it were something you've never heard before. And finally, to help us hear that story in a new way, this is the last time I'm going to use the name Jesus. From here on out, I'm going to use his name in Aramaic, the way he actually may have heard it, uh, and, and the way the stories were told and written down. So I'm going to use the name Yeshua. So here we go. Once upon a time, baby Yeshua was born, and right from the start, people thought he was special. Some people celebrated his birth, and some people were afraid of how special he was. They were so afraid, in fact, that it became dangerous for his family. So they had to leave their home and immigrate to Egypt, where they lived for most of Yeshua's childhood. Mm -hmm. When Yeshua was around a teenager, his family was able to move back, and even then, there were some signs that Yeshua was different from other children. He spoke and thought differently. When Yeshua became an adult, he started traveling around and teaching people. His message was a little different from many of the other teachers of the time. He said that we should love each other as much as we love ourselves. And he said that people in power shouldn't lord it over other people. He encouraged people to share what they had with others who didn't have as much. And he said things like, blessed are the peacemakers. And blessed are those who hunger and thirst for justice. Now... It might surprise you, but those teachings made some people angry and afraid, especially people in power. And Yeshua was arrested and executed. That would be a pretty sad story if it ended there, but that's not the end. Three days after his death, some of Yeshua's friends go to his grave and find that the tomb, the place where they had buried his body, is empty. In one of the Easter stories, an angel appears at the tomb and tells his friends that Yeshua has risen from the dead. 
He hasn't exactly come back to life, but he's been transformed and he's back, but in a different kind of way. But here's the fascinating part, for me at least. Yeshua's resurrection is considered the most important part of his story, but nobody sees it. The story only tells us what happens afterwards. And there are four different stories about Yeshua and his friends afterwards that are most famous. In the first one, his friend Mary is still at the tomb crying because she's confused by everything that just happened. Yeshua appears behind her, but when she looks at him, she doesn't recognize him. She thinks he's the gardener. But then he says her name, Mary. And when she hears him say her name, she recognizes him. In the next story, Yeshua shows up on the beach where his friend Peter is fishing. Peter was one of his best friends, but when Yeshua got arrested, Peter ran away and told people he didn't even know him. So Yeshua takes a walk with Peter along the beach and tells him that it's okay. He forgives him. Later on, Yeshua shows up to a group of his friends, but one of them, named Thomas, doesn't believe it's him. Yeshua shows him the scars on his hands and feet, and when Thomas sees them, he recognizes his friend. And lastly, two of Yeshua's friends are walking along a road toward the town of Emmaus. Yeshua shows up and walks into town with them, but they don't recognize him. Once they get to where they're going, they have dinner, and as they're sharing a meal together in community, they suddenly recognize who he is. Now, like I said, lots of people have used this story of Yeshua and his friends as a reason to do all kinds of things, some of them pretty hurtful. And different people will tell you different things if you ask them what the story means, but for me, those four stories sum it all up. To be known by name and to know others by name. To truly know others and be truly known. To forgive and be forgiven. To be known by my scars. To share those parts of ourselves that are wounded or painful and love and be loved anyway. And finally, to be known in the breaking of bread to be part of a community that nourishes and sustains each other. For me, that's the message of Easter. And it also occurs to me that it's the perfect message for Trans Day of Visibility. To be known by name and to be able to share a full, authentic self. To be valued and loved in community to experience a kind of transformation into a more authentic, more beautiful, one might even say resurrected self. Yeah. That is what trans, our trans siblings ask of us. And when we create spaces where our trans siblings can be visible, we create spaces that embody the message of Easter in a very real, very concrete way. So in that sense, May we always be Easter people, a people of community, forgiveness, authenticity, and love. So friends, if you would help me be that community up here, we're going to stand up, and I need hand, your hand help while we lead our congregation in the affirmation. We're going to say it first in English and then in Spanish. We are Unitarian Universalists, a people of open minds, loving hearts, and welcoming hands. Somos unitarios universalistas, personas de mentes abiertas, corazones amorosos y manos que dan la bienvenida. So, my children and youth friends, I invite you to go out this way to some crafts and games and fun. And while you're doing that, I'm going to stay here, friends, so you're going to follow Miss Kate out that way. And... I have some homework for the congregation okay. that you have to remember. Oh, Evan, you're going to go that way. Follow them, follow them. Follow, follow Miss Kate this way. There you go. Perfect. So you have some homework, friends. As you may have noticed, it's kind of rainy. So after the service, I'm going to invite anybody who would like to 
and hopefully there will be some. Stick around. I have a whole box of eggs up here, and we're going to hot they're fake. We're going to hide them around the meeting house, and then when we're done, I'm going to go get the children and youth and bring them back in to find them. But I cannot hide them by myself, so I need some of you to stick around and help. Thank you. So each Sunday we have um, lay ministers who offer a listening presence if you have something on your heart. And this morning our listener is Les. You'll see that he has a, a colorful scarf on and you can find Les out on the patio after worship. And Robbie is going to say a word about dining for dollars. My favorite thing in the whole world. <laughs> Um, so we've been asking for event submissions, and there's a, there'll be a table in Bard Hall because of the inclement weather, so please drop by and see it. And they've asked me, Lori and Sylvia have asked me to make it more prevalent on the website, which I've done. There's a link to the event submission form on the homepage under news, and then the, you can find the Dining for Dollar page, hopefully easier than some of you have found. So please, we need your events. It's two, week, two weeks till the deadline. Please get them in for the first six months through December. December 31st. We're trying this this year for the first time, and then we'll do it again, you know, later for the next, you know, the rest of the year. So please get your events in today. Thank you. One of the ways that we live our values is by sharing our offering each week with an organization that shares our Unitarian Universalist values, Working for Justice. And in months when there is a fifth Sunday, like this month, we share our offering with one of our partner churches. This time we're sharing it with our Transylvania partner church. Like this month, we share our offering with one of our partner churches. This time we're sharing it with our Transylvania partner church in Romania. This special relationship has lasted now for 30 years. There have been visits and much learning about our shared faith. Now with the, nearby, uh, with the war in nearby Ukraine, there is even more pressure on that community and that congregation to expand their social services, including food deliveries for the homebound. So today's offering will help the congregation support their local community in a time of great need. You may donate this morning here by credit card using the dip jar over here or by check or cash using the basket over there. And you can always uh, donate directly on our website, firstuusandiego.org. Thank you for your generosity. This morning's offering will now be gratefully received.
Let's take a moment to breathe into that. Each year at the Easter service, we offer the Wheel of Life ritual, during which we call out the names of our beloveds who have died in the past year. We did not have the ritual last year. We did not have the ritual last year. And so this year, we will hear the names of those who have died over the past two years. After each name is spoken, we will ring the bell as a reminder of our loved ones who have left this earthly plane, but whose memories linger on like the sound of the bell. Linda Sola. Annalise Tiff. Reverend James E. Grant. Bill Hogue. Betty Evans Boone. Reverend Dr. Carolyn Owentoll. Frida Nikoloff. K. Fur. Thomas Furl, Harold Bergsma, John Hull, Curran Jeffrey, Alyssa Ellis McLeod, Jerry Olinger. Paul Hillary, Joe Combs, Mary Rose, Therese Note Bellinger, Ernest Loteca. McLean Mac Downing, George Clinky, Bill Kaiser, Shirley Stoller, Barbara Bobby Beer. Elsie Zala, Fritz Stocker, Carol Newell, Jorge Hinojosa, Doreen Sulzer, Mary Jane Svet, John Davis. David Matthew Gregory.
if there are any names that we missed, let us take a moment and call them out now. Let us take a moment and call out any names that we missed. You can go ahead or think each name. And if you're online and at home, please write them in the chat. And we will hold those names with you. Blessed be.
Thank you, choir. And may it be so. A reading from the book of John, chapter 20, verses 11 through 18. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the Father, but go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and to your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and she told them that he had said these things to her. That's me at age three in my Easter best. That reading from the book of John, from the Christian scriptures, where Mary goes to the tomb so that she can anoint Jesus' body for burial, and she finds the tomb empty. And then by some miracle, she sees Jesus, and when he calls out to her, she recognizes him. Belief in the resurrection of Jesus is what makes Christians Christian. That's the foundational belief. And for modern-day Unitarian Universalists, that idea that Jesus actually rose from the dead is what makes many of us avoid coming to church on this day. Some have even said to me, on Easter Sunday, I don't recognize my church with all this stuff about empty tombs and Jesus appearing to his disciples. And so what do we, Unitarian Universalists, do instead of a traditional Easter service? We celebrate flower communion, many of us, and we will do that in a few weeks. Today's service just had too many good things in it for us to include the flower communion as well. Uh, but typically, we have flower communion, and we celebrate the wheel of life. Isn't that what Easter is actually all about? We didn't stray very far, is what I'm saying. A longing for loved ones who have died, and a desire to feel them with us again. Flowers remind us of new life. And the wheel of life reminds us that love never dies, that those we have lost are with us still. This is what Dale and I left behind when we moved out here to San Diego to be with you, a driveway full of snow. And the snow is beautiful, but by March, even into April some years, we would grow weary of it and we would long for spring. More snow, but we have some deer in the backyard. That's a picture of our backyard. And in this picture, you can see a hemlock tree with some snow on it. Um, I would say it's about 20 feet tall now, 
Dale, would you say it's that tall? 30 feet. 30 feet tall. They grow fast. Dale's father, Andy, brought us. He had a hemlock tree in his backyard in the place where Dale grew up. And he brought us a little sapling from that mother tree in a bucket. And we planted it in our yard where it flourished and grew. And it reminded us of Andy, who loved to go down to the backyard and smoke a cigar and maybe do a little digging. And he dug us up that tree. And then the mother tree got some kind of blight and had to be cut down. But we had the sapling. And so it continued to grow in a new place. And for years after Andy's death, I would look out at that tree and think of him. Evidence of resurrection all around us. And then one day, one of us would come home from work and pull into the driveway, and we'd hear a magical sound. Peepers. Peepers, these tiny frogs that ha would hatch in the swamp behind our house. Harbingers of spring. Makes you homesick, huh, Dale? As the days warmed, more and more would hatch, and the sound would grow quite loud. It was magical. Now that we live in San Diego, we are learning about the seasons here. To us, they are much more subtle than what we're used to in New England. But I notice the songs of birds that I hadn't heard before, and the air feels lighter, and of course the days are longer. And in the desert, wildflowers bloom. Wildflowers blooming in the desert, so improbable, flowers in a barren land. Evidence of life longing for itself, evidence of resurrection all around us. Crocuses and blades of grass that push up through ice and snow. Peepers and birds sing their songs. Flowers bloom on sandy soil. And our loved ones appear to us in our dreams, in songs, in stories, in trees that they have planted and in the heart's long memory. In mystery we are born, in mystery we live, and in mystery we die. And perhaps after death, the mystery continues in a beautiful cycle of love and memory and renewal. Alleluia, happy Easter. Well, I, I just can't resist the chance to say thank you to all of our musicians, to our yes. choir who showed up today, uh, and Forrest, thank you to the Ardor Trio uh, who shared their music with us including their pianist, Lay, who I hope will come out and uh, lead us in our closing hymn. Uh, as Reverend Justine mentioned, Tomas is with his loved ones today, and so we have Lay very capably filling in. Thank you for being with us today. Uh, and we invite you now, yes, please. And of course, the greatest joy is making music all together with you, and so we invite you to rise in body and or in spirit, and join us in singing our closing hymn, number 61, Though the earth awakes again.
Our closing words are from a poem called The Invocation of Kali by May Starton. Help us bring darkness into the light. Help us bring darkness into the light to lift out the pain, the anger, where it can be seen for what it is, the balance wheel of our vulnerable, aching love. Put the wild hunger where it belongs, within the act of creation, crude power that forges a balance between hate and love. Help us to be the always hopeful gardeners of the spirit, the ever hopeful gardeners of the spirit who know that without darkness, nothing comes to birth. And without light, nothing flowers. All right, friends, I need some Easter Bunny help. Anybody who wants to hide eggs up here, we got a lot of them. <laughs> 